Welcome back to Free Your Compass. Uh, today, I'd like to focus a little bit more on uh, basically uh, mental health, depression, uh, in particular men's mental health and depression, but I mean, ultimately it's all relevant. Um, <clears throat> we've just come out of uh, November, which had the uh, Movember, uh, a really good initiative to uh, bring awareness to men's uh, mental health issues um, which you know personally I don't think there's enough focus on out there uh, and even when it is focused it's well it's kind of left in a manner where we kind of don't know what to do about it Uh, very close to me in particular having gone through and still going through uh, a lot of it myself and uh, close family members as well so you know, from personal experience I uh, thought it's something that well given the nature of my channel what I'm, you know, I thought it's something that I should really you know, discuss uh, also, as we get closer to Christmas as well, you know, with the standard festivities, um, you know, the positivity, the you know, wonderful time of the year, uh, celebrations, just a little reminder that it's, for a lot of people, it's actually a very bad and uh, a very um, depressing time of year as well, so just keep that in mind. Don't get down about it, but you know, realise that as Christmas approaches, uh, overall suicide rates increase. So, uh, sobering thought, though. Uh, interestingly, uh, Movember to basically bring awareness to men's mental health issues, one of the things that is a particularly disturbing statistic is that 60 men commit suicide every hour that's one a minute uh, worldwide it's a very distressing statistic when you consider it you know, why do, why so many people finding suicide is the only way out in their eyes Why is it, you know, men in particular are so much more prone to that ultimate solution? Uh, over November, um, a lot of things happened, basically brought to light a few of these things to me, and I thought I'd share few of my thoughts in that regard and hopefully that can help someone out there as well. Uh, I'm a communicator and a talker. I, I find it very easy to talk in general and yet to actually talk about my feelings genuinely. Um, what's bothering me and you know, how I'm struggling with things. I find particularly difficult, um, even with my wife, much to her uh, a term of frustration, I find it very difficult to share that kind of thing even with her. Um, over the last few months, several things have happened that have sort of like thrown me, you know, mentally and emotionally, and uh, I've been struggling with that quite a degree and one of the things you know, my wife pointed out to me is you know there's a lot of help out there you know there's lifeline there's beyond blue um, there's there's actually there's an enormous list um, at some point I'll add links to my site to some of them 
and the thing is, is that they've, they've also got like online chat as well as phone, you know, the whole works. And even with the awareness of this, I still resisted. And it, it, my resistance to it made me think and consider that just that little bit more. You know, why am I resistant? I know I need to talk to someone. I know that talking helps, but the idea of actually, you know, ringing up and talking to someone, or even, you know, sitting down and talking with my wife or finding a friend to talk to, not that I have a lot of them, um, it just seemed like the complete antithesis of what I should be doing. It was so difficult for me to even, you know, come to terms with that idea that I, I didn't end up doing it. Just the essence of that really made me think. You know, I personally found it difficult to even think about where to start. You know, how do I talk about this? You know, my own feelings of stress, anxiety, my depression, my ultimately my deep set feeling that in some way I failed. Um, that I wasn't worthy of help and I think that that to a large degree is is an issue that a lot of males do have um, probably a little bit more so on average than, than the opposite sex where it's almost like there's like a hardwired problem solver um, scenario like in our heads where you know we've got to figure out the solution and being able to find the solution basically makes us worthy and then because we can't figure it out therefore we're not succeeding and the talk about it admits that we're not succeeding and thereby uh, makes us even more of a failure it's it's weird it's a very strange convoluted set of thoughts and emotions sort of tied in there and what I really wanted to put out there is that it's important that we talk and it's important that we share those feelings those emotions and the 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 deep set level of confusion that we have about it as well you know, when you feel like a failure it doesn't necessarily mean you are I mean most of the time you're not it's it's really it's it's in fact you've hit a, you've hit a point where it's difficult to see a solution and having yourself and other people tell you, you know chin up you know, suck it up, feel better, any of those other things, it's, it's not actually helpful. It's, it's the complete opposite of helpful, actually. So, so if, you, if you're in a position where you're losing sight of a solution, you're losing sight of how you can make things better, uh, how you can progress. It's it's hard to actually give you any like positive view as you know a way of basically relooking at things so that you're no longer stuck in that deep hole of darkness. And I've been there. I, I, I understand that it's painful. 
I know exactly how that feels. Um, I've come very close to suicide um, several times in my life. And each time something stopped me, different, different things each time. But ultimately, as bad as things get, as bad as things may be, if you end it, you cannot make it better. And the other thing that I look at as well, from my personal perspective, I'm, I'm desperate to be a provider and to provide a good life for my family. And I've made some pretty shocking mistakes along the way with that. Some really bad errors in that regard. And myself, that's been extremely difficult to, to deal with. And the fact of the matter is, is regardless of any other facet, if I were to take myself off the board, so to speak, then there is nothing left that I can do to correct any of those errors or to bring it back. Not only that, but I'd also be showing the worst of all examples to my son. And that is that giving up is actually a solution. And that is not a lesson I want to leave behind. Added to that, I don't want to leave that the other the other element that suicide brings to the table is all of those people that you leave behind and the guilt that you leave with them. I I can I can never I can never allow that in my life and if you're in a situation where that thought bubbles up try to try to re-angle the way that you look at it because ultimately when you're in that place there's nothing about you that you can look at that will stop you from doing it because at that point in time, and anybody who's never been there, please pay attention to this as well. When you hit that level, once you hit that level of darkness and that level of desperation and loss, the idea of yourself is it's not... It's not a, there's nothing about you that you could possibly look at that would stop you from doing it, really. Because as far as you're concerned, you have no value left. And the best value that you can bring to the table is to end it. That's where your head's at. It's varying angles on that theme, but that's where your head's at. You need to put it somewhere else, you know, for me, it's looking at what you leave behind, the damage that you would leave behind, or the complete lack of opportunity to do anything to correct it or bring it back, the, the possibilities of turning it around. I know that I've I've battled with depression, I've battled with anxiety, and I still do. And these are really difficult 
of things that are to fight uh, addiction as well. And, you know, it's, and I'm hoping that by putting this out there that you know, some people can actually look at it and go, hey, I'm not alone. And that's ultimately that's the message I want to get across here is you are not alone. You know, we're coming up to Christmas and for some of you this is the worst time of the year. For some of you it's the best. But I want you to remember you're not alone. This is your one and only opportunity. Life itself. It's hard. It's rough. It's... As Rocky said, it's a mean and nasty place and nothing out there will beat you as hard as life will. And it's true. But if you don't stand back up, you will get nowhere. If you don't fight back, you will get nowhere. A shot not taken, it's a shot you'll never get. Ultimately, I don't know whether this whole thing's nice and congruent and actually has the desired effect, but... I just really want this to hopefully resonate with a couple of people out there that realise that, you know, if you're going through some tough stuff, you're not alone out there. And please, for goodness sake, fight past the the difficulty in talking and just find somebody that you can talk to you know whether it be an online chat a friend a relative a phone call whatever just find someone to talk to it does help it doesn't solve them but it does help Well, thanks for listening anyway, and I'll catch you in the next video.